Hi, in a previous video I did an unboxing of some gear for this BlackBerry trackball device on a breakout. I thought I'd try and incorporate it into a project in this video with a micro view from SparkFun, basically an Arduino with a built-in display. First getting this to do anything interesting at all and analysing it and then perhaps seeing if we can make it display something fun and interesting on this. It is the ICS H044A trackball. Here is the IC station page. Now, what do they have to say about the device? Okay, so they've got the dimensions here. So this is in millimeters, and that's fairly tiny. It's also got 2.5 to 5.2V DC power. Four color, um, but maybe we can use people. I don't know if there are transistors attached to those. And each of these is paired with a surface mount Hall effect sensor, which can be used to measure up, down, left, right movements of the trackball. Button line pulled low when the switch is pressed. So if I'm understanding what's going to happen, as you turn this ball, you're going to get pulses, depending on the direction it's going, on any of these Hall effect pins. And the rate at which those pulses are generated gives you the speed at which the ball is moving. I think it may be time to see if I can get some kind of logic analysis on these pins. In a mailbag a few weeks back, I opened up this logic analyzer, which was suggested by uh, one of my long-term viewers, Mobius Horizons. And uh, I'm going to open it up, try and get some software on there, maybe connect it up to this bad boy and uh, see what starts to happen when I roll these. I'm hoping that what I'm getting from these Hall Effect will be some kind of digital quadrature. I mean, that would be what I'd want, but I'm going to make this up as I go along. We have the actual logic device, so it's got a, a mini USB, it's got a whole bunch of pins here with a nice diagram showing what those pins do. Eight channels and two grounds, some jumper jerky, ten of them, and your USB mini cable. This is only 24 megahertz, so that's still fast enough. I'm going to have a quick look at what we've got inside, and it's just stuck down with glue. It says USB Salia. So we've got here, what is it? A Psi 7C5B013A. Maybe that's some kind of power regulation or similar device. Um, these look like a bunch of resistor packs. And uh, that looks like our little LED. And uh, let's get a bit closer and look at the soldering on that. So none of those pins appear to be shorted. So I'm relatively confident I should plug it in, it'll do something. Of course, that also depends upon if there's anything useful in terms of firmware on this board. I've bought some uh, Arduino just to abuse and use as a power supply, and I've got this logic analyzer connected up to my board, ground. We've got the voltage coming from there. There's a ground going both to my board and to the supply on the Arduino. Uh, I should have pin zero to the button, then one, two, three, four to these, and five six seven should be not connected here is a salia logic software and i'm going to try first doing some button presses so let's start two three four five six button presses we see we've got six button presses with it being pulled low and you'll notice here it's showing me the width of the pulses that's rather fantastic i'm seeing kind of what i'd expect on the others fairly random signals but what's going on here on channel one? This is actually the right channel. Is this black wire is going into what is marked as pin one here? Unseat and reseat it there in case there's a problem there. And I don't see it. We have a channel missing. Nothing hot on this board. Okay, let's go put this uh, into continuity mode and I'll just tap that out. It's the one that says right, and if I probe there and here. So it's not this solder joint, but it may actually be right in where the Hall effect sensor is in here, where this is actually glued on. Here is the uh, rollerball, um, the Blackberry style rollerball under the uh, microscope. You can see you've got the LED connections, blue, red, green, white, up, down, left, right. I'm presuming that's RHT. Button, ground, and VCC. 
and it was this pin here, the right one, that appeared not to be doing what I wanted it to do. But I think it is just a two layer board. It's the ICSH044A. There's the IC Station logo and there's www.icstation.com. There's a little bit of uh, what looks like flux residue. There's these three things here. What are they? This. Are those like uh, test pads? And there's solder appears all the way through that via. Um, maybe I should go and mark my pin front and back. What's this crud here? Is that fluff? Let's try and take that off. Oh, look. Is that that fluff, fluff? Is that peelings from the solder mask? This pin is one, two, three, four pins in. That's this one here. And you can see the trace for it going all the way up here to this via here. So flip it over. And there's the hole. It's this one here. This surface mount device here. And this resistor here. Up, right, down, left. And that there is probably my Hall Effect device right there. So either that's not sensing, and that depends on this wheel moving. There is your wheel, there's your Hall Effect, and if I move the ball, oh look, wait a minute, so that wheel's moving, that wheel's moving, this might be a mechanical fault, hold on, I think I found my problem, that one moves, so this one that is the right, and it's not moving, it appears to be caught, why is that wheel caught? So it's not an electrical problem at all, it's a mechanical problem. Because that wheel, if you can see the others moving, oh, they don't always look. You can see it engaging, but not. So you can kind of see them, these wheels moving under here, but that right one doesn't want to go. Can I turn it using this to probe? I can, but it gets wedged. Hold on, there's a bit of crud. It's kind of getting stuck. Let's try and tap it over the stuck point. So look, now it's going. I mean, what's the mechanism that ratchets these? I mean, you look at how this one spins here, which is the up one, it spins fairly freely. Compare it with this one, and it just doesn't want to spin the same way. I can feel it. So this way it wants to go, that way it's ratcheting against something. So if I so it spins against the direction. The other ones spin against the direction I push the wheel. So they go in the opposite way, triggering their Hall Effect sensors, which are obviously now what these little devices down here are. But this one... So it's not an electrical fault, but my chances of being able to actually repair that are slim to none. Look, maybe what I can do, maybe I can persevere with only three of the uh, directions. These devices have been sat in my cupboard for a while and are the MicroView from SparkFun. It's a USB programmable Arduino compatible device with a built-in low-res OLED. Now, I'm considering that you'd program it up with this. and Well, a low-res OLED plus a roller ball equals tiny super miniature little game, right? You could play a little game. Now... Given I can only go three directions, I might be limited in what games I can choose to do. But let's find out a bit more about the MicroView. And uh, it's actually got a demo mode on it. Now, I had two sets of these boards. One set had some vital flaw that meant you couldn't program them. And one set were just fine. I'm not sure which batch this one is from. So I may need to get another one from the robot cupboard. But uh, let's plug it in and just see what it'll do handy little clock uh, which is not the actual time but that's still cute some animations and blinking and then I think it goes through some other demo mode stuff does it but it's capable of doing lines and sprites and if this is one of the ones that is programmable it'll actually also have an Arduino bootloader on it a handy thing with this is that the actual pin functions are printed there on the programming board it means I can wire it in and then drop it in afterwards. And it's almost a shame that the header there is at right angles. I think I 
chose to do that as opposed to putting a straight down header. Oh, well, more fool me. That's not a problem, really. Uh, we'll just pop that on. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to pop it over. And if I put it over this way, I can wire it, control it like that. Five volts in the micro view button. There's no problem. Reference this uh, first and then drop it in circuit afterwards. So the micro view has got some fairly nice spark fun documentation sketch include library manage libraries a micro view spark fun micro view so let's install that and i'll clock cube demo slider v slider demo widget i guess we'll try this slider thing of widget for micro views widgets these vertical sliders well if i can make these work and then later perhaps go and run them based upon the position of that ball will get somewhere. Let's see if I can send the sketch over, but nothing else is happening, which suggests this might be one of the micro views that does not work. The ones that don't work, I believe they need to be uh, pulled apart and have uh, programming headers put on them and the bootloader put on them. And I believe the mistake that had been made was that the demo code had been flashed in such a way that they'd uh, removed the Arduino bootloader code so you didn't actually get it. And should I perhaps stick some stickers on to identify the ones that need the new code? And then maybe I can uh, go and put the bootloader code on them manually. So they're rather polite notice. Our sincere apologies, you received a faulty micro for you. Encloses a fully functioning replacement. For more mistakes on what information on what's happened and why, how we're preventing this, please visit here. Um, and installing a bootloader on it. With a lovely little heart, isn't that very sweet? So there's your demo, but the demo took a bit longer to do something, which suggests that is a bootloader. Compiling, uploading, and something happened there. Hey, there we are. We got the sliders. Awesome. Right, so we can now upload code to this thing. Okay, let me see if I can figure out how to get it to read this to change these. I've thrown together some code based upon the slider down a left right value two sliders from 0 to 100 We've set all these pins to input pins. We aren't doing anything with button yet So here's the main loop the first thing you're doing is we're using pulse in to check if any of the left up or down and right when it has a pin that works uh, has registered a pulse so if they're a pulse means they go up and then down so if we got an up pulse and we're not at the top then we increment the up and if we've got a down pulse and we're above the bottom, then we can go down. If we've got a left pulse, now I go across one. However, I'm using this mod operator. And what that means is if it goes above 100, it wraps the way all the way right round to zero. Since we haven't got a right, this means it can just wrap around. If any of these pulses have changed, notice I'm ignoring mouse right right now. If we go and set the values and display. So that means that when nothing is changing, it should be hitting this loop fairly quickly because it's not trying to display anything. I've kind of made this up, but uh, based on my experience doing other code, that display is going to be the slowest thing in this loop. Bottom one is for up and down, the bottom slider. And if I start moving it down, you can see it going down. And if I go left, Left is actually making the slider go right, but it's registering there are pulses. And I suppose what we could then do is look to see if we could turn this ball plus the micro view into a game. First thing is I figured out you can use VS Code to write Arduino code, which I've got to be honest, I like more than the Arduino IDE. This is what I've come up with. The way I've built this is I've created classes. A class for a brick object, a bat object, a ball. I've created an abstract scene class and I've not used it in game scene yet. So maybe uh, I'll later come back and fix that. And we go and set up a set of bricks. And here's got a whole bunch of positioning data and where they're going to be. I'm having to use the up down control because I said left and right doesn't quite work. There is a controls thing here where you tell it how how much it's gone left and how much it's gone right. Now it says mouse left and mouse right, but actually we know they're going to be mouse up and mouse down. It's quite tricky to play in surf under the camera. There's some code here for handling collisions, and this will all be in GitHub so you can see it in detail. Slightly unforgiving version of Breakout. There's an update uh, where it updates moving the ball, checks the ball hasn't gone off the, out of bounds, and then checks the rest of the collisions. Collisions, actually if the ball collides with the bricks, we delete a brick, and we make sure the ball bounces in the Y direction only. 
There's a draw method here, which uh, draws the ball, draws the player, draws each of the bricks that are still there on a teeny tiny screen. Now, there was some trickery with reading these. The Spark Fun tutorial suggested using the pulse in, and I found that that was a bit, well, it lost a lot and it wasn't particularly quick and wasn't particularly sensitive. And we then I've created this tractor. Now this is sneak positive and a negative for a direction. So you know the, the, the left and the right. Uh, there was some code on GitHub where I got some ideas for this from. And what we're doing every time we call read for each of the pins, if the value that we've read is different from the last value we had, then we know we can move either in the positive direction or negative direction. But what I'm polling for is the current state of the Hall Effect sensor. So we create one of these game scenes and a track. Uh, tractor, one of these uh, positive negative direction things. Here's the main loop, the Arduino loop. Uh, so we check if there's anything changed. We go and set call controls with what has changed. Uh, we've got this draw frame count. We start at one, we take one away, and it'll be zero the first time. So at zero, we clear the screen, update the scene so everything moves, draw the scene so everything is drawn, then display the screen again. And we reset this counter to 30, so every 30 loops it'll do it. And then we wait one microsecond. So every 30 microseconds we draw, uh, but every one microsecond we're reading the control. So we get a relatively smooth frame rate, so the game speed is controlled, but it is actually reading this sensor as fast as it can. And I've made it so if you miss the ball, the game just resets, so there's no lives on this. And uh, Oh, that was nice. I mean, this is a bit of a silly idea, but I could perhaps consider making a case, adding batteries, and then I've got this game as a, a possible handheld game that I can take around with me and demonstrate or what have you. It is, after all, only 64 by 48, so I could actually hook up a 60, 64 by 64 light grid to it and get a, a big version of the same game. And uh, it's extremely hard to uh, to talk while playing this, actually. It requires a bit more of a level of focus. So if I got one of these with all four wheels working, I could put it on the left, right instead of up and down. Either that or I could mount it so this up and down is this way round. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that build as much as I've enjoyed making it. And I'm going to be putting the code on GitHub and also, like I said, do a follow-up video. Perhaps see if I can put this game into an enclosure, make it more like a game that the kids can play. And for those who are less able to hear, or for those who are speakers of other languages, uh, subtitles are a fantastic help. And I've enabled community subtitling on most of my videos, if not all. If I've forgotten, then there's just a button I need to tick somewhere. If you look down in the description, there is a link where you can contribute your own translations and transcriptions. So it'd be wonderful to see help from the community there. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave some comments share it, subscribe, and uh, I'll be back with uh, more videos with electronics, robotics, sensors, gadgets, microcontrollers, sometimes Lego, and code, and uh, go and build awesome things.